Hi friends, this is Tina and welcome to my new video. I had an accidental break from posting in July, so I'm back here again with my August Fun With Me video and I'm really excited to show that to you. I was just really busy for the last month. I constantly went to my parents' house and back home again and I was just doing a lot of things which let me kind of fall back from posting, but I really hope you enjoy this new theme that I'm setting up with you. August is my bullet journaling anniversary and for a long time now I've always honored that by making a new version of my first ever theme in my bullet journal which was houseplants. I think it's always fun to go back and do a recreation of a theme that you have once done and just see how much process you have made throughout the years. For my cover page I wanted to paint some monstera leaves and first I just defined my sketch a little bit and then went with an eraser and just erased some of the more harsh lines and then I went in with my Van Gogh watercolors. So like you saw I made a really detailed sketch so I could always know what I was doing. I think especially when you're painting plants like this that are supposed to look a little bit more realistic it's really good if you just do a really good sketch beforehand so you're not completely lost when you actually start painting. So I took a light green color and made the base for all of the leaves. I didn't focus on any more details than that. I just painted all of them and after that I wanted to add some more details on top. Like I said, I'm using watercolors again and I know that I've been using watercolors for so many themes in a row now. I think I will definitely go into quash again for next month, but this time I just didn't have that much time. I was just leaving for a summer cottage with friends, so I decided to just do something quick and just take my watercolors because I know that I can be a little bit faster and make a looser style with watercolors instead of gouache. So that worked for me better, but if you would like to create something similar with gouache, I am pretty sure that that would look amazing as well. By the way, all of my used products are listed in the description as always, so definitely go check that out if you are curious about any of the products that I'm using in this video. After I painted the base color for all of the leaves, I took a green color that was a little bit darker than the one that I was using before and I started darkening the leaves and adding a little bit more detail to them. If you look at monster leaves, you can notice that there are these veins in them. What I decided to do is I took my pencil and I drew on top of the base color some guidelines for the veins. But the veins are a little bit lighter in color, so instead I decided to actually paint the other areas of the leaves instead of the actual veins. And now that I have my guidelines done with the pencil, I can just go with a darker green color and paint the leaves, leaving the vein parts of the leaves uh, without color and that sounds really confusing. I don't know how to explain it but I feel like you have already understood what I'm saying so it's kind of useless to even explain it further but yeah that was a much easier way of doing it instead of trying to paint lighter color on top of darker green watercolor. Obviously you could do the same with gouache but I just thought that maybe it would also look better because I can focus on the shadows a little bit more now that I am working in these sections in the leaves. I actually did something really similar with my August 2021 setup and especially my cover page. I painted a fiddle leaf fig and I used the same technique there and even though it sometimes takes a little bit of time, I think it's a great technique for painting a little bit more realistic leaves. I know these aren't super realistic or anything but I still really like how they look. By the way, you might have noticed that I didn't post a weekly spreads video for July at all. I was totally planning on posting normally for July, but you know, life just happened and I noticed I was really busy and I decided to just not post anything except my plan with me video. And with me skipping the weekly spreads video, I maybe understood that I might be doing that in the future as well. I've noticed now that weekly spread videos are not really bringing me that much joy anymore. They are taking a lot of time to film, edit, and post on YouTube as well as they're not really getting that many views and I also feel like they're not maybe that worth it. It also might be that I won't be posting them from now on. So yeah, that's a little bit of an update for you that didn't see my community tab post or maybe some of you were confused why you didn't see that last month. 
But yeah, maybe not posting a weekly spread video each month will give me either a little bit of more time to work on something else or just do another type of video on my channel that will be a lot more interesting for me and maybe for you as well. We are actually moving to a new place at some point in September and I'm excited about that because I will finally have my own room and I feel like then I will start posting a lot more different kind of content on my channel as well, not only these overhead shots of my <laughs> bullet journal or my sketchbook. So yeah, look forward to that. I'm at least really excited about this change. But yeah, after I was done with all of the leaves, I started working on the stems of the plants and I just made them really simple, nothing too exciting, but I really like how all of them look in this group together. Even though this cover page is really beautiful, I think it still turned out really minimalistic, a little bit more minimalistic than what I would have liked. I think maybe it should have had some other color in it, but at least it's good for now. I just took off the tapes in my cover page and then I started working on my really minimalistic August title. I was just using my Archer and Olive Acrylograph and I just lettered August in this cursive font. It's a really minimalistic font but I just couldn't come up with another one and I think this worked out fine anyway. But then I started working on my calendar spread, which was kind of exciting because I haven't done a full-on calendar spread for months now. I think I did that last time in May. So yeah, I decided to dedicate a full spread for my calendar, even though I absolutely do not need that. But anyway, <laughs> I just taped my calendar so I can, you know, paint on the background and I started focusing on the plant on the spread. For this plant in this spread, I chose a variegated rubber plant and I wanted it to be pretty massive and almost taking over the spread and I think I managed to do that really well. So I first started with a beige color for the edges of the leaves. I will link the reference photo for you down below so you can see what I mean. But these plants usually have a lighter kind of edge to the leaf so I just started with that so that that would be the background color for when I started painting on the greener parts of the leaves. For this spread I wanted to take a more relaxed style for my paintings instead of going with that really precise painting style I definitely wanted to go for a loose style that would be a much faster one compared to the cover page. And yeah, this definitely took much less time than my cover page and I was really happy about that. And I really think that this turned out even better than my cover page. This definitely is my favorite spread in this whole setup. After I painted the edges of the leaves, I took a kind of colder green color and painted some of these asymmetrical patterns on top of the leaves. Again, look at the reference photo if you actually want to know how these plants look like. It's really hard to explain it here, but they definitely have these really random patterns on top of them. Then when I was done with the base layer for the green leaves, I took a darker green and just made more of those really random patterns on top and especially made the middle part of the leaf a little bit darker so it would look a little bit more realistic again. I feel like this period of only doing watercolor themes in my bullet journal has already helped me a lot with watercolor because I know how to handle it so much better now and it comes a lot more naturally than before but I've also noticed while I have been on this watercolor journey now that I have struggled with it so much. I think as a medium it's so much harder than a quash and it's just so hard when you have these two completely different mediums other one is really opaque and the other one definitely is not. It's just so hard to work with them both so even though I think I'm pretty good at it sometimes it's still really hard and I feel like it does not come as naturally to me as working with gouache. Since I was doing the same thing for pretty much all of the leaves I thought it would be kind of useless to have all of that footage in the same video so I decided to cut these out. I really hope you don't mind having a little cut here where now the painting is fully done. So yeah I just decided to do this because I feel like in so many of my videos I always do the same steps over and over and over again and then my video gets super long so I thought this would be a better option for this one. 
But yeah, when I was done with the actual plant, I, by the way, think it turned out so pretty. Again, one of my favorite paintings in this whole setup. I started working on the actual calendar in the spread. And this time I wanted to do something completely different with my calendar spread. I have never done a calendar like this. It's not that different, but still is a big change for me. I decided to do a calendar that has these really thin and long boxes. And I really like the look of that. Again, it's definitely a minimalistic look, but I really like how the calendar on top makes the painting in the back kind of pop out from the paper. So yeah, it's a little bit different for me and it makes me feel a little bit more excited than just doing the same thing over and over again. <laughs> I was using the same acrylograph shade for the boxes and for the header and I think that color actually worked so well with the green of the leaves. As a last little detail, I decided to add this brown paper in the corner in this circular shape. And I think even though it's definitely still a really minimalistic spread, I think it kind of balanced the spread out nicely so that there is something darker in both sides of the spread. But the next spread that we are working on is my tracker spread and I made it really similar as in my July plan with me video. I just think that that layout worked for me so well that I decided to take that with me into the next month. The painting that I'm working on right here in the middle of the spread is from a plant that probably does not exist. I actually ended up just mixing a bunch of different photos that I saw of plants and made my own fun looking leaves that I wanted to paint on the spread. I think it definitely has many similar characteristics as the plant that I just painted, but yeah, probably doesn't exist, but it's totally fine. You don't have to create things that actually exist. <laughs> so I did pretty much the same thing as I did with my uh, previous painting. I just took a lighter green color and painted the whole leaf with that first and then I started making the similar kind of patterns with a darker green color. Again, the process was really fun, especially now that I was working on a plan that didn't have to look like anything that already exists in the world, so it was a really fun thing to do. As you can see, this video is again a little bit shorter and I've really enjoyed working on these shorter plan with me videos because they just give me so much freedom on doing something else as well with my life. I feel like when my video is 30 minutes long, it takes so long for me to edit and record my voiceover. So that's always a great thing when a video is a little bit shorter and I think many of you might like that as well. But after I was done with the painting, I worked on my tracker spread itself. I made these little mini calendars on the left side of the spread and also made a mood tracker on the right side. Again, it's a completely the same layout as in my July setup, so it's nothing really new or exciting, but it works for me usually. I think that's definitely one spread that I've used the most last month, even though I didn't use my journal that much. I actually wish I wouldn't have done the palm leaf tracker spread last month because it would have fit this theme even more perfectly, but I just didn't want to repeat myself that much. But now we are doing something a little bit different because we are skipping two pages that I will probably make later. I just didn't have time to make them or sketch them out or even think what I was going to be doing here. So I just decided to skip them for now and maybe work on them later. I think I will include my memory spread here and make a little playlist or something. So yeah, we are working on my last spread already. This is going to be my weekly spread where I decided to paint some pothos leaves, which kind of works perfectly because this time I had some pothos leaves as my filming prop for this plan with me video, as you can see in the corner. This is my absolute favorite plant. I have so many golden pothoses in my house and this one that I have here on the frame is definitely my favorite child. It has always just been so easy to care for and I feel like it's constantly thriving. <laughs> 
I painted some pothos leaves in my last year setup as well and I remember how hard it was to work on them because the patterns are really confusing and of course if you look at them too much or try to perfect them it will just look worse. So yeah, I really tried to take a relaxed grip of my brush and just work on it in the most loose way as I possibly can, but it was again really hard. I think they ended up still looking like pothos leaves, so I'm really happy about that in the end. I think the key was just to make some more contrast in the leaves and actually add a lot darker parts in the leaves as well so they don't turn just really light in color and they will instead have a lot more interesting look to them. But that was always a little bit hard because when you're working with watercolors they are often drawing to be a little lighter in color so yeah it was definitely a little bit of a struggle but we got there in the end. When I was done, I took my acrylograph pen and just wrote the days of the week on top of these long and thin columns and I also made the boxes with my 01 brown pigment micron fine liner and that's almost it for this whole spread. The last thing was just to make this small calendar in the upper left corner of this spread. And that is it for my really minimalistic houseplant theme for August. I really hope you liked this video and if you have been missing my older style with quash, I will try to do that in the next months. I am also missing quash with my bullet journal so I would definitely want to do that in the future. But yeah, now we are getting to the end of this video and before we get there, I will quickly just flip through the pages that I made in this video. I really hope you liked this one and if you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and leave a thumbs up and leave a houseplant emoji down in the comments if you watched until the end. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye!